Hello, I'm Zoe Ringwood. I'm the Landscape Conservation Area Manager for South West Essex and today I'm at Warley Place. Now this site is completely unique. It's a historic garden as well as a nature reserve and it's the gardens of the renowned horticulturalist and naturalist Ellen Wilmot who gardened here from 1875 to 1934. Wilmot in her time she propagated many different varieties of plants and at its peak there were 100,000 different types of plant on the site. Today um, the site has got, a, it's got an appeal of a sort of a wild garden and a romantic ruin as well as having a lot of features for wildlife conservation and we're going to take a walk around and show you some of those. So we're here in mid-March and March is a fantastic time of year to visit Warley Place because it's an absolute spectacle of colour. You can just see around me here that it's just a sea of yellow with all of the daffodils. It looks absolutely beautiful. And at Warley Place is also renowned for its veteran and notable trees. Some of these are native and some of them are ornamental as a remnant from the historic garden. Um, the meadows, they are unimproved and they've, they've got an abundance of yellow meadow ants nest hills which just demonstrates how they haven't been ploughed for so many years. They're managed through grazing and we have cattle on every year um, between June and the autumn and the cows are just on at quite a low stocking rate so they will slowly get the grass down but will allow the flowers to still flower and some of them to set seed. So this is a red kite that is just circling over the West Meadow at Warland Place. What a fantastic sight to see today in the sunshine. So here we are next to some absolutely fantastic veteran trees. Now this line here is a line of sweet chestnut trees and they're all slightly differing ages. Um, the oldest one, which is the one in the middle, is estimated to be 363 years old, which is absolutely incredible. If you think that plant, that tree was planted in 1657 or 1658, and you just think, you know, over that time, the changes that tree has seen as it's just stood there growing. It's absolutely amazing. So veteran trees are so important for wildlife because they provide features that you don't find anywhere else. Within a veteran tree, you've got dead wood, you've got rot holes, which provide cavities, you've got contorted bark, and this, the dead wood habitat and all those different features, they provide roosting spots for bats, nest holes for birds, and the dead wood is so important for saprophyllic insects, which are insects that are associated with dead wood habitat. So just below these chestnuts, we have a feature of the historic garden, and this feature is known as a ha-ha, and basically it was is a feature that's in many historic gardens and it's there as an invisible fence line so basically they dug a, a ditch with an angle on it and put a wall up the other side and this enabled them to keep livestock within one area without them moving into another and it said that they didn't like the an ugly fence line and when you looked across a lawned area where there was a ha-ha you wouldn't even know it was there so it was a way of keeping up the aesthetics while still being practical and managing livestock. This is one of the many garden features and this is the walled garden. And within this garden there's some really important ornamental trees. We've got a, a ginkgo tree just here. And this ginkgo tree is one of the oldest of its species in the country. So it's a real special tree. Walled gardens, they were developed um, for them to sustain their own microclimate so they could grow plants, vegetables, fruits that they weren't able to grow in more exposed locations. Um, but today, the walled garden provides a warm microclimate that will be fantastic for insects. So here next to another spectacular veteran tree, 
and this one it's a Caucasian wingnut which is an ornamental tree but the fact that it's veteran it still provides those features those holes the gnarly bark um, cavities etc which will still be used by our native wildlife so it's still got the wildlife benefit the wingnut is in all its glory in june july time when the seeds which are like long winged catkins which get about a foot in length can be seen hanging from the branches yeah. this is alpine gorge and this is one of the really unique features that ellen wilmot created and she had the vision for this and put that vision into action when she was just 21 years old um, and you can just see down here that it's a rocky gorge and the rocks hit here were actually transported from Yorkshire so transported from Yorkshire in the 1800s just for the purposes of this project and the gorge today is used by a group of badgers there's quite a large badger set here and at Worley Place we've got two ponds so we've got one known as the South Pond and one known as the North Pond. Both of them have got hides and they're good places to sit and bird watch. And near the South Hide you can see species such as Nuthatch, Tree Creeper, Long Tail Tit. So in the South Pond we're lucky enough to have grey crested newts um, and we also have species such as marsh marigold and yellow iris that grow around the pond and the pond's managed for wildlife so it's got shallow sides and you've also got um, a good amount of emergent vegetation which is really important for inverts such as dragonflies and damselflies as they crawl up out the water so i hope you've enjoyed our walk around Worley place today as i said at the start it's a unique site there's nowhere else like it in essex and do come along and have a visit we come here in march with the spring flowers but there's lots to see any time of the year so please do come and enjoy